whoever's coming online. And uh, go from there. So get your get your coffee. Get your coffee ready. And Bible's out. Hopefully you got your fire started out on your somewhere. Maybe in the fireplace or outside on your lawn or wherever wherever you like to start a fire. Legally. So. Just some side notes uh, for the church over here at Hope Road Christian Church. We, uh, we, for the first time last week, were able to resume our fellowship on Sunday mornings at 11 o'clock. So that went really well. Uh, about like I expected, uh, some of the people came and some of the people were not ready to come back. And that's okay because we continue to live stream. So just know that we're doing that here. Uh, this, this coming Sunday will be the same, 11 o'clock worship service. Um, whatever makes you feel comfortable is what you should do. Uh, something that we all need to pray about. Something that the Lord we need to ask the Lord for help, help with, and discernment and uh, strength, uh, wisdom, right? And uh, pursue His will in the middle of it all. Hit the like button. Hit the share button. Uh, whether it's Facebook or YouTube, you can hit the like button. Um, Make comments in the comment section there uh, if you want to, to let us know you're listening and let, let us know you're, you're tuning in. It's always a good way of fellowship. Uh, we we read, I, I pretty much read everything uh, within a day or two. If I don't see them right now, I can kind of see over there on the Facebook uh, camera that somebody's on or not. So just kind of know that that's what we're doing. Uh, we're going to be in Psalm 56 tonight as uh, we try to get things going. So Psalm 56, and tonight I'm reading out of the New American Standard Version uh, because I like I like the words that are used there a lot better. Not that not that the NIV is bad. There it just says it says what I wanted to say and. and uh, it, Helps, it helps me in my study to make application and uh, understand what's going on in the, in, the, in the scripture itself. So just know that that's, that's why I do that. New American Standard is my one I use for personal study just because it's some reason it's, I, I just enjoy reading it a little bit better than the NIV. And I preach out of the NIV on Sunday mornings mostly because most of our churches are using the NIV. Sometimes I'll study out of both with, along with the King James and maybe even one or two other ones from time to time just to get a good study going. So uh, as long as you're reading uh, out of a translation that is uh, what we would consider, I guess, a, a good translation that is really basically we want something that's translated from the original writings or something close to that. So you want to make sure that we're not getting uh, commentary from someone, someone's opinion when, when it comes to translations. Well, that's why I'm using the uh, New American Standard tonight. So if it doesn't match up exactly with what you have, and that's fine. Just kind of know that they say the same thing. Different uh, words used in the translation. Psalm 56 tonight. So I was talking to several people this last week. Other preachers and talked to my dad on the phone the other night, talked to my son and my sister, and I talked to some folks here in the church, and different conversations come up, and it's, it's really, it's really uh, challenging to get through a day without discussing what's going on in the world, because it's all in our face all the time. And there's nothing wrong with discussing it and talking about it. There's nothing wrong with uh, trying to work through it together and seeking the Lord together if that's what we're doing. So just kind of know that we are definitely in prayer over all of that. And uh, just know that uh, it, there's a fine line between discussing and trying to understand and seeking the Lord's will and how we participate in the, world, the world's events. And, uh, and obsessing over over it and also getting caught up in it in a worldly way. So there is a, des there is a, a, des a definite need 
for the Christian to be in tune with the Holy Spirit. Uh, it's always been there. The need has always been there. It's, it, we've always needed the Holy Spirit. We've always needed God's guidance. We've always needed to be on mission for the kingdom of God. Uh, it just seems like right now, because of various different uh, events and happenings around the world and in our own neighborhoods, things are uh, pretty obvious that the need is there. When things are good, when, when life is good in America or life is good in your neighborhood, it's real easy to just sit back and enjoy the ride and, all, and neglect your relationship with God neglect the spiritual things that are going on in your heart and in and around you in your church or wherever it's easy to get it's easy to go to get in the habit of just going through the motions of the Christian life when things are going good but now for the last for the first quarter of this year it seems like there's been so many different life-changing events and events that threaten certain things that we all enjoy and need and it would be real easy for us to be caught up in the ways of the world if we're not paying attention to the spirit of God and I'm talking to believers right now I'm talking about other believers you can't I mean you, we can't expect people who aren't saved to act like Christians we can't expect people who don't accept God or don't don't repent of their sin and accept Jesus as Lord and Savior and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. We can't re we can't expect people who who don't live in that to live by the Word of God. We would like for them to do so, but we can't expect that from them because they've never made the commitment that they would do so. However, that we believers we have made that commitment. We said we wanted Jesus to be Lord and Savior. We said that we believe that He is the Christ. We said that we don't want to live a life that offends God anymore. That's repentance. We've been baptized for the forgiveness of our sins. And we have received a gift of the Holy Spirit. So now we're obligated by our own commitment to the body of Christ, to the kingdom of God. To We're obligated to find out what the word of God says about our behavior in all situations, in all parts of our life. There's an airplane about to fly over, so... Uh, Take a drink of coffee and I'll wait for it. There's a I know it's not gonna really land here to Hartwell for those of y'all that think it is. So going back to what I was started saying is I've been having conversation with a lot of people over the last several or last week or two. It seems like every day it's gonna every, every no it's almost like there's nothing else to talk about when when, when there is. But it's just there. It's all up in your face. And uh, today I want to just say something that's directed to toward other Christians. That if you know me and that we're connected that way, if we know each other, uh, I'm talking to you. If you're a believer, if you're a Christian, if we've spent any time, if we've spent any time whatsoever serving the Lord together, I'm talking to you. I'm also talking to the Christians I don't even know. Because we're working for the same God. We're working for the King. We all have the same goal, hopefully, if we're tuned into the Holy Spirit and what He's doing in our lives. Um, what I'm about to read applies to the Christian because we live in a world, and Jesus warned us of this, we live in a world that does not accept the Christian life. Uh, in fact, is very offended by the Christian life. In fact, so offended by the Christian life that the Christian life is under attack. Especially in, in, in the United States of America now, the Christian life is under attack in ways that maybe it hasn't ever been under attack. Um, it's been under attack in these ways in other parts of the world for years and centuries. The Christian life has always been under attack. The body of Christ has always been under attack. And people will hate a Christian because they hate Jesus and we knew that when we made our commitment however it doesn't change the fact that things get hard and it's sometimes uh, worrisome or fearful situations come about so the question then becomes how do we stand firm how do we live the Christian life in a bold way where we don't shrink back from what we believe 
and we continue to not only go into the world and love people regardless of what, whether they love us or not, but how do we do it in a way that honors God? And also what's coming about is for the, for the American Christian, Christians who are citizens of the United States of America, it's like how do we be faithful to God and faithful to our commitment, but at the same time, how do we uh, stay proud to be Americans uh, and, and keep all that in priorities? Our priorities are straight in the kingdom of God first and then American second. That's the way it's got to be. But how do we, how do we stand up for our freedoms and fight for the things that we should fight for as as Americans? At the same time, honoring God and loving people and and, and everything that is called for in a Christian life. But I'll say this: this is why we need Jesus. You know, this is why we need the Holy Spirit in presence in our life. This is why we need to keep in step with the Holy Spirit. But I'm not only talking to. I'm not only going to read this psalm for the Christian as an American or the Christian preacher is because there's a lot of us out there who we're all dealing with the same things we're trying to we're trying to maintain our congregations and we're trying to lead our people and we're trying to encourage them and help them and give them strength through uh, preaching and prayer and so on so I'm talking to you as well but I'm also talking to a group of people Christian brothers and sisters who uh, serve in law enforcement or firefighters, or EMTs, emergency service personnel, specifically law enforcement at this moment. But uh, I want to read this because it, I, I find it helpful in my walk, and I hope that you would find it helpful if you're seeking the Lord for this time when it seems that the entire world is coming against you. The entire world is hating you. And everything that's wrong in the eyes of many is the fault of law enforcement or the fault of the Christian or, or the fault of the Christian law enforcement officer, right? And it's, and it's like, you know, I, 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 I've told this to many people over the last two weeks just in conversation, and I don't say it in a bragging way. I say it because it's how I feel. But because I'm a white man who's a Christian and a preacher, and a law enforcement officer, I'm the, I'm the most hated man in the world. This is how I feel. Now I realize, before y'all start saying about stuff on the comments, I realize that there's a lot of people who know me, who love me, and care about me. But when I'm talking about in the spectrum of what's going on in the world, that's how white people feel, that's how white males feel, that's how white law enforcement officers feel, male and female, okay, that's how we feel, so what do we do with our feelings, we, we have to go to God, we have to take it to the Lord, we have to ask the Lord, okay, what do we do with this, how do we respond, especially if we're believers, right, if we're Christians, if you believe that God is God and you trust Him and have this relationship with Him, then we have to go to Him even with this and say, "What? What about this? Can, what can I do? And how does this? How do I make this honor You? How, how do I do it?" And uh, Psalm 56 helps me because uh, the psalmist here in Psalm 56 uh, was seized by the Philistines, right? The enemies had seized the, the psalmist. And here's the words, and I'm going to read the whole thing straight through. And then we'll talk about it a little bit. And then we'll be done. We won't talk, we won't talk very long. Because I'm, I'm going to let the word, I'm going to let this, the scripture speak for itself tonight. So if you're law enforcement or if you're a Christian who's uh, living in a world where everything is coming down on you because you're a Christian or because you're law enforcement or because you're a white person or because you uh, because maybe because you're a black person, maybe because you're anybody who is a believer who all you're trying to do is love people the way God wants you to. And it just seems like everybody and everything in the world is against you. This is, the, this is where to go to get words from the Lord. Verse 1 of Psalm 56, Be gracious to me, O God, for man has trampled upon me. 
uh, fighting all day long has oppressed me. Uh, he oppresses me. My foes have trampled upon me all day long, for they are many. For they are many who fight proudly against me. When I'm afraid, I will put my trust in you. In God, whose word I praise. In God, I have put my trust. I shall not be afraid. We can. What can mere man do to me? All day long they distort my words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. They attack. They lurk. They watch my steps. As they have waited to take my life. Because of wickedness, cast them forth. In anger, put down the peoples, O God. You have taken account of my wanderings. Put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your book? Then my enemies will turn back in the day when I call. This I know, that God is for me. In God, whose word I praise. In the Lord, whose word I praise. In God have I put my trust. I shall not be afraid. What can man do to me? Your vows are binding upon me, O God. I will render thank, uh, thank offerings to you. For you have delivered my soul from death, indeed my feet from stumbling, so that I may walk before God in the light of the living. Isn't that great, y'all? The entire 13 verses of Psalm 56 are words of reminder and encouragement courage and and hope because it's a very hard thing to receive when a, even one person expresses hatred toward you but when it seems like an entire nation expresses hatred toward you Christian Christian law enforcement officer or even not saved law enforcement officer or anyone else in the world that feels the hatred that's going on directed at them these this is this is the psalmist here is calling out to a God that he trusts he's calling out to a God whom he had an, a relationship with whom he had confidence in even though he had been uh, seized and captured by his enemy who hated him, he still had full confidence in his God. Full confidence that God, his God could handle the situation. Waiting patiently for God and his timing to make things right. If you noticed at the end, he was saying he was, he was praising God because he had delivered him from death. When, no matter what happens to us in this world, if we're believers, if we're saved, if we put our trust in God, Satan and all of his wickedness put together cannot take that from you. It doesn't matter how many people in this world allow the wickedness to flow through their bodies and out of them like a mighty river against you. You still have victory in God. No matter how bad it gets here, in the end, we will be victorious. God will have his way, and God sees all of it. God sees it all. There was a couple times where he says, uh, I shall not be afraid. These are a lot of statements of facts in, in this psalm. I shall not be afraid, right? He says, I know that God, God, that God is for me, right? What And he says, what can man do to me? Now think about that, because it doesn't it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good at all when other people, even if people you don't even know, basically want you dead because they hate you so much. Whether it's because you're a Christian, whether it's because you're a man, a woman, whether it's because you live some other lifestyle or whether it's because of your skin color, it doesn't feel good at all. But the psalmist is saying, even though 
I'm experiencing this pain of hatred and anger, it still doesn't compare to the love that God has for me. Right? So, this is why we need to stay in tune with the Spirit of God. Because it is overwhelming. Especially if you stay watching the news all the time. Or if you stay listening to people who are talking about the news all the time. Or maybe you can't escape it. Maybe it's just part of what goes on in your world. But we have got to know. We have to have confidence. Now is not the time to pick up your Bible and try to figure out what who God is. I'm telling you who God is. And I'm telling you, if you're not saved, now's the best time to start that relationship and start getting to know Him. But for the for the Christian who's been a believer for a long time, this is why we've had Bible studies every two times a week, three times a week. This is why we've had personal study. This is why we've been in prayer every day of our lives, preparing us for things that are going on right now. So that we can have confidence and that we can cry out to God and say, look, you're, you're God and I love you and I'm going to praise you. Even if these people hate me, I'm going to praise you and I'm going to leave it in your hands to put, to put revenge on them. It's not my place to hate them. It's God's place to deal with that. And once we get tuned into that, as much as, 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 hard, as, as hard as it is even to say out loud, God wants us to know that Jesus died even for them who hate us, for those who hate us, for those who run us into the ground, for those who treat our families poorly because of their opinions and their ideas, because they reject God even. So I want to just challenge everyone who's feeling the pressure from the hatred and the wickedness in the world, and it's, and it's becoming personal, and it should be. Psalm 56, every day, read through it. Psalm 56, every day, use it as your prayer so that you can stay close to God. So that you don't get sucked into what's going on in the world and you don't participate in the hate and the violence, which, which does not honor God. Because here's the thing about God. This is the God who loves everyone so much that he let Jesus die on the cross so that we can all be reconciled to him, have an opportunity to be reconciled to him. However, this is the same God who is just. And this is the same God that will have his vengeance over those who refuse him. He will have his way with those who reject him and his holiness and his love and his grace. There will be a day when we all stand before God. And I pray that we will stay faithful to him. And I pray that when we stand before God, he will be pleased by the way that we handle this hatred and this anxiety and this anger that comes toward us every day because we're Christians, because we're people, because we're law enforcement, because we're firefighters, because we're women, because we're uh, families who love God. Whatever the reason people are hating you, let God deal with that. And let God love you. That's all I got. You got anything? As usual, I love you and the Lord loves you. And uh, we're going to be finished. Just come back uh, Sunday. This is Friday, so come back Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. We're going to be live streaming the worship service. If you're in Arden, North Carolina, you're welcome to come uh, to the church at 11 o'clock worship with us in person, or you're welcome to watch it on a live stream, whatever whatever uh, is comfortable for you. God bless y'all, and we uh, will see you then.